Hello everyone, I hope you're having a spirited jack o -ween. I decided to do something I haven't really done before, but I figured in the time and the spirit of the season, why not? So I decided to read a scary story. Yes, I know it's a bit cliched, but considering we're in unconventional times, it feels good to bring a little bit of the old feel back, just for the time being. So, let's get into it. During the late 80s, early 90s, I was around 6 or 7 years old. I'm at home with my sister, who was 14 to 15 at the time. We grew up in a small Texas town. Everyone knows everybody. We're home alone at this particular night and my folks let my sister babysit me frequently. We always got along due to our age gap. Anyway, it's about 8 p.m. in the winter. Deserts get pretty damn cold, so it is dark, and we are in the common room, since this is where the TV was. Watching 60 minutes, or 48 hours, or hard copy, or some shit. Those one-hour news pieces on CBS that chronicle large crimes in depth, Trafficking, murders, kidnapping, the like. Basically a gritty lifetime special. This one was a typical story. Guy next door that was quiet. Went on a rampage in his next door neighbor's house. And mutilated them. And kidnapped their young daughter. Well, the thing about our house's common room. Is the door leading to the backyard was a large glass door on a wall. Of floor to ceiling windows. Nothing but blackness beyond it. Unless you have a backlight on. We did not. The front door is on the other side of the room. The small entryway. This is a solid door, so you can't see what is beyond it. With a glass storm door on the outside of it. About 45 minutes into the show, they're talking about this ongoing manhunt. And... Front door bangs like crazy. We jump up and scream like banshees dead silence now. The only lights on in the house are the kitchen down the hall from the common room we were in and the light from the TV. We start thinking maybe something on the porch. We did have planners and a rocking chair out there. Maybe they just blew onto the door. This was West Texas. Crazy strong winds out that way. A minute or two of silence us holding each other post-adrenaline overdose passes just when we we're about to declare everything is safe we hear the storm door on the outside of the front door close someone had to have opened that door to be able to bang on the front door like that we're both frozen in the middle of the room on the floor where we were watching TV my sister crawls over to the TV and turns it off it was an old TV, so you had to turn that metal dial to switch it off. Which it does with a mild loud. Now it is just us. In a room. Dimly lit by the kitchen light down the hall. I don't remember how much time passed. I was frozen with my sister. Still crouched by the now off TV. But we kept making eye contact. Then looking at the front door. I remember this part vividly. I'm on my knees, sitting on my feet, and I turn around to look back at the wall of windows and glass door. We hear, and I see, the back door knob turn. It was locked on the knob, but not deadbolted. It rattles slightly, as if someone is gently trying the handle. Neither of us make a sound, just hold our breath, then loud as all hell someone is trying to force the door open, just jerking it back and forth. The whole wall of windows is vibrating loudly, and I can see with each jerk of the window how my slight reflection gets fuzzy, then clear, then fuzzy again. My sister flips and screams bloody murder. I'm still frozen on the floor. 
she gets up and basically drags me into the bedroom, slams the door, throws her mattress and anything she can in front of her door. Thankfully, she had remembered the phone. One of those ungodly, heavy, beige, plastic, long, metal antenna portable phones. We still had to direct dial the sheriff there, and in her panic, she didn't remember the number. She just hit redial on the phone. It was one of her friends, and she tells them in broken gas that someone is trying to get in the house, and she needs to get there right effing now. The profanity sticks out here more than anything. Who knows? Young brains, I guess. I'm curled up on the floor and cannot stop shaking. We don't hear anything else until we see the headlights of my sister's friend and her parents driving up to the house. We never did find out who was at the door or why. There were no signs of anything happening but a couple of scuff marks on the bottom of the back door that we could not remember if they were there beforehand or not. Nothing like that has ever happened to me or her since. But for damn sure, we never forget to lock a door after that. Well, that was quite a story. I hope you all enjoyed and remember to enjoy Jack O'Ween.